Good morning, or depending on you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and as always, told out of voice radio. And given that today is the official release date of the new Pokemon trading card game expansion, Darkness Ablaze, it seems only fair and fitting to drop a buy list on you lovely ladies and gentlemen, so you know which cards to go and get. Now the rules for the buy list are the same as they always are. I'm going to be giving you a list of the cards that I think you need in order to be able to basically make any deck you want. But if you don't want to buy some of these, don't. And if you want to buy more, do. Cards that make particular decks, I'm thinking things like Copper Raja, Blaziken, things of that nature. I'm not going to put them on the buy list. Because you're either going to buy Copper Raja and Blaziken to make Copper Raja and Blaziken decks, or you're not. So I don't think they belong on the buy list. We're looking at the kind of cards which are going to end up straddling multiple decks. Similarly, we're not going to be talking about Pokemon V, except for one very obvious example. Because they're a little bit more expensive, and again, they tend to be largely for one deck. I will say at the beginning that Vikavolt V, Eternatus V Max, and Center Scorch V Max do look like they will be among the very, very best decks when this set drops. So you might wish to get them sooner rather than later, because I can't say for certain, but there is a very good chance the price of those will increase as time goes by. You have been warned. So starting off then, you need four copies of Decidueye and Rowlet. Decidueye's got the awesome ability that makes it immune to Pokemon Vs and GXs. It is going to be used in a bunch of decks, both as a tech and a main attacker. Though there is a Stage 1 Altaria that does the same thing coming in the next set that you should be aware of. Rowlet, if you played Birdkeeper this turn, does 60 to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon. That is nice to start off with. Golisopod is going to be a really good tech. You need a couple of these for just two colorless energy, bearing in mind as an evolved non-V Pokemon, you have the option of using both twin energy and triple acceleration. So if you're using them in your deck anyway, good news. And you do 30 damage base plus 50 more for each of your opponent's Pokemon V, including VMAX, and Pokemon GX, including tag teams, in play. This is a kind of card which is going to be teched into a whole bunch of decks, so you need to have a couple copies of them. Now, Mad Party's a weird one. Mad Party is not just one Pokemon, it's a bunch, so you're going to need four copies of Poltegeist. These are the Pokemon that do 20 damage for each Pokemon with Mad Party in your discard pile. Poltegeist has the awesome ability to discard a Mad Party Pokemon, draw two cards. But then you'll also need Bunnelby, who's your other real attacker here. You will need Mr. Rhyme, who it's an evolved Pokemon, largely just going to be binned to do extra damage. And the Dene, who is basic, but with a free energy attack, is going to be binned to do extra damage. You don't need Mad Party, but those cards are very cheap at the moment, and this could end up being a very good deck in the future, so it's one that I would highly recommend. You need four copies of Relicanth, because Relicanth's got that rather lovely attack that lets you search for a couple of rare fossil and put them straight onto your bench. If you play a fossil deck between now and Relicanth rotating, there is an excellent chance you're going to be playing Relicanth with it, which is why you end up buying stuff like Relicanth. Two to four copies of Milotic. It's got a really nice ability that says once during your turn you can heal 20 damage from each of your Pokemon. It's the kind of thing that could make its way into a whole bunch of decks. Speaking of the fossils, I think we probably need two to four copies of Dracovish. Now, Dracovish is one of these that could end up being a little tech, or it could end up being one of the very, very best Pokemon around. It's got the rather lovely ability that says that while it's in the active, your opponent cannot play any cards from their hand to evolve their Pokemon. This is the kind of thing that could not be played ever, or it's the kind of thing that could shut so many decks down. It is a deck in and of itself, as well being a tech in other decks. Arctazolt is the other fossil I think we need two to four copies of here. It's got that awesome ability whereby when your opponent attaches an energy from their hand to one of their Pokemon, you place two damage counters on it. Yes, it stacks. Yes, it works on the bench. You could end up popping this in a bunch of decks. 
Couple copies of Mimikyu. Now, Mimikyu's only ever really going to be a one-of. All that is to say, you're only going to have one on the field. But it's the kind of thing you need a couple copies, because if it's important, you'll play two, just in case one is prized. It just sits on the bench and stops your opponent healing their bench Pokemon. It really is as simple as that. I don't think you'll ever really need more than two copies, because you only ever want one on the field, and the second will only really be played, just in case the first one is prized. Ariados is one of those Pokemon I think you're going to need four copies of. Not many people talking about this lately, but it's got that ability whereby when you play it from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon, you may switch one of your opponent's benched evolved Pokemon with their active. I.e., you can just grab one of your opponent's Pokemon into the active as long as it's evolved. And then, of course, we've got Scoop Up Net at the moment, which will allow you to pick up Ariados and then play it back down and reuse it. Very much depends on how many people are playing evolved Pokemon. Although, do remember that Appleton on a coin flip will do the same thing for basics. It's not when you evolve, it's on a flip, but it's a similar kind of deal. And I do think these are the kind of Pokemon that could see a bunch of play in a bunch of decks. Crobat V is the exception to the you don't need Pokemon Vs. You do need Crobat. You just do. Crobat's too good. Crobat is literally the old Shaman, though it is limited to once during your turn. When you play from your hand to your bench, you draw till you've got six cards in your hand. There are going to be very, very few decks between now and when Crobat rotates that don't play Crobat. Maybe in the short term, people use Dedene. But Dedene is going to rotate out in a year's time, and then we're only going to have Crobat, at which point the price of Crobat will only go up. You need Crobat. Sorry. Hydreigon, I think you need a couple copies of. It has got that amazing ability that lets you attach as much darkness energy from your hand to your Pokemon as you like during your turn. And this is the kind of Pokemon that could end up being rubbish and seeing no play, but all it needs is one really good darkness Pokemon being released, and all of a sudden, this becomes one of the top decks in the entire format. You've been warned. Two to four copies of Hooper. It's got that really nice attack that does 90 damage, as long as it came from the bench to the active this turn. It's going to be great in Eternatus V Max decks. Remember, Eternatus has to have eight bench darkness Pokemon to really make the most of its attack. But also, it's a single energy basic Pokemon that can do decent damage. It is going to see a rather large amount of play. And finally, I'm slightly less sure about this one, but I reckon a couple copies of Kangaskhan. The two colorless energy, bearing in mind it can use twin energy. You do 120 damage if one of your Pokemon was knocked out from damage from one of your opponent's attacks last turn. It's a revenge Pokemon. It's a basic Pokemon that can attack for a single energy attachment that can do decent damage and take some cheeky prizes. It's a kind of Pokemon that's going to end up being played here and there. Now, moving into trainer cards, you know my deal by now. As a general rule, I think you should just pick up four of each of the trainer cards. The classic example I always use is AZ. There were people for a long time saying, ah, oh, you'll never play more than one or two of these. It's a one of you'll never need a play set. And then Vileplume Decks got really big and started playing four copies of AZ so that you could essentially pick up your Vileplume, play all your item cards, and then play it right back down again. Very nice card. So, running through nice and quickly then, four copies of Big Parasol. Big Parasol is the one that just stops all effects of attacks other than damage. It's exactly the kind of thing which is going to help against a whole bunch of random decks. Special conditions, energy denial. This is going to help you against Pokemon that haven't even been released yet. Best to have a playset just to be ready. Four copies of Billowing Smoke. It's a Pokemon tool that you attach to one of your Pokemon. And then when that Pokemon knocks out one of your opponent's Pokemon, they don't take their prize cards, they discard them. Certainly in Disruption decks, making sure that your opponent doesn't get a card advantage when you take a prize, clearly going to be a good thing. Now, Bird Keeper's a weird one. I still think you need four copies of it. It's a switch that also draws you three cards. But it's generally seeing play over in Japan at the moment as a one or two of. 
But it's also very much worth bearing in mind that we've got those Pokemon like the aforementioned Rowlet, and there might be more in the future, you never know, that attack for free if you played Bird Keeper this turn. So, best to have four of them. Four copies of Cape of Toughness. It gives a basic non-GX Pokemon an extra 50 HP, and any deck you play for the next at least two years that relies on basic non-GXs, you are going to be considering this rather strongly. Familiar Bell, you need four copies of. You search your deck for a Pokemon with the same name as a Pokemon in your discard pile and put it in your hand. When you're playing one of those decks that plays few different Pokemon, this is probably going to end up being pretty gosh darn good. Four copies of Glimwood Tangle is one of the very best cards in the entire set. Let's you reflip coins for an attack. And it's going to firstly make any flippy attacks better, but secondly, it's going to make attacks that are flippy viable when they wouldn't have been otherwise. Kabu lets you shuffle your hand into your deck and draw four cards. If you've only got your active Pokemon in play, you draw eight cards instead. There are going to be some decks that play few Pokemon that really enjoy this, but it's also just a draw supporter. And post rotation, we don't have that many good draw supporters, so... I think you should have a play set. Old PC, I'm going to say four copies, but I'm going to leave a star next to it because this card might actually be kind of trash. You flip two coins. If both of them are heads, you put a card from your discard pile into your hand. When you flip heads, this is phenomenal, but it's not that likely you're going to flip a double head, so you've been warned. Four copies appears, lets you search your deck for an energy card and a darkness Pokemon. Basically, it lets you search for a Crobat V to draw more cards and also search for a special energy. That's a bit ridiculous. Pokemon Breeders Nurturing lets you essentially search for two Pokemon that evolve from your Pokemon in play and evolve into those Pokemon. In big evolution decks, this is going to be a great card. Four copies of Rare Fossil, because if you ever play any fossils, you're going to need them. Quick caveat here... If you don't want to play any of the fossils in this particular set, there is a strong argument that, well, future sets with fossils in are going to have their own rare fossils, so you can just get it then. But I think you should get it now. Four copies of Rose lets you attach up to two basic energy from your discard pile to one of your V-Maxes. And then discard your hand. And along those lines, four copies of Rose Tower, which lets you draw until you've got three cards in your hand. To be clear, this is not just for when you've played Rose. It is also just Stadium Draw, which can help out a whole bunch of decks. Four copies of Spike Muff. Whenever a player's active Pokemon moves to the bench, that is switching or retreating, you pop two damage counters on them. And this can be good for punishing your opponent. But it can also be good for Pokemon like Copperaja that need to have damaged Pokemon on the bench. Or, you know, my boy Spiritu, who does an extra 30 damage for each damage counter on him. Yeah, that's going to like Spike Muff. <laughs> we then also are going to probably go ahead and need four copies of Struggle Gloves. If the Pokemon this card is attached to has weakness to your opponent's active, its attacks do 30 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon. Basically just, you know, lets you hit harder when you're weak to your opponent's active Pokemon. This could be really good to cover some bad matchups. Turbo Patch is a ridiculous card. It lets you flip a coin and if heads attach a basic energy from your discard to one of your non-GX basic Pokemon, a lot of decks are going to really, really enjoy this. Four copies of Yellhorn should have been called Vuvuzela. I got you back, Antoine. It just confuses both active Pokemon. I mean, if you've got a free retreater in the active, you can just confuse both actives but then retreat. But there's also all kinds of Pokemon that need you to be confused for extra damage, etc. Yellhorn are going to love them. And then the energy, four copies of Heat Fire Energy. Now, this is a weird one. It gives Fire Pokemon an extra 20 HP, but it cannot be attached using Welder. And it cannot be searched out by stuff like Giant Half. But then again, that's all rotating in a year. I think you need four copies of them. But do bear in mind, Fire Dex might not play this because they've got a lot of tricks that need basic energy. Four copies of Hiding Darkness Energy. You could get away with two here. It gives free retreat to Darkness Pokemon. But we know there's going to be decks that want to retreat for free. So four is probably best. 
And then finally, four copies of Powerful Colorless Energy. It allows your colorless Pokemon to do an extra 20 damage. When you're playing colorless decks from now until this rotates, you're probably going to want Powerful Colorless Energy. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. That's my buy list. As always, you make your own buy list. This is supposed to be a nice little primer. Some of you are going to look at this and go, you know what, Wossy? We'll I don't think I'm ever going to play Struggle Gloves. I don't need to buy them. I don't want to play Fossil Decks. I'm never going to play them. So I'm not getting Relicanth. And that's absolutely fine. Some of you are going to go, Wossy, I'm so psyched for Blaziken. I'm going to buy four copies of that right now. And again, that's cool. This is intended as a guide to show you the cards that you need in your binder that are likely to jump into decks. Other than your main attackers. Because main attackers, it really is a case of figure out what you want to play and go and get those main attackers. But there we go. Now it's time to hear from you lovely ladies and gentlemen. Which of these cards are you going to pick up? Which of these are you not going to pick up? And which cards that I didn't put on the list are you running to buy anyway? Go nuts in the comment section, but be nice! And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all that good stuff, head on over to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio, or you can do exactly that. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.